Okay, folks, welcome back. This is lesson three of month three of the mentorship. We're going to be dealing with specifically the institutional sponsorship and how to identify it in setups. First, we're going to look at the institutional sponsorship in long setups. Key to identifying institutional sponsorship in long setups is the notation of a higher time frame price displacement. And that can come in the form of a reversal, an expansion, or a return to fair value. Intermediate term imbalance in price. Now this is a move to discount or a sell side liquidity run. In other words, uh, the price is gonna actually uh, retrace or it can begin by going below an old low to run out the sell stops. Once one of these two occurrences uh, appear in your chart, the next thing you'll be looking for is short-term buy liquidity above the marketplace. Now, this is going to be ideal for pairing long exits to sell to. And obviously, you're going to be looking specifically for a time of day influence, i.e. London Open for the low of the day or a New York session low formation. Now, it's important understanding that Number one and number two are the criteria, what sets up the expectation for institutional sponsorship. Then we see the actual institutional sponsorship come in by way of attacking the marketplace for the buy side liquidity that would be resting above the marketplace. In other words, we have buy stops typically above old highs when we're, when we're short. Uh, the assumption is, and again, I, I teach the role playing model that gives us the perspective of a market maker. So you have to have that market maker uh, perspective on price. So we look to sell high, but we have to find buyers that are willing to buy higher from us. So the criteria is, is we have to look for short-term buy liquidity above the marketplace. Now, it's going to be layered buy stops throughout the marketplace because it's, uh, there's all kinds of trading that goes on. It's long-term swing trade, short-term day trading, scalping. Uh, but you have to look at the higher time frame for that short-term buy liquidity to give us a framework to see if there is, in fact, institutional sponsorship in your setup. And obviously, you'll see these characteristics come to fruition by studying the time of day influence. Now, obviously, you're not just studying it. Eventually, you're going to be actually trading in the marketplace at these specific times of the day, London Open, New York Session, London Close, and sometimes Asia. And obviously, the opposite would be for institutional sponsorship in short setups. We would be looking for, again, much in the same way we saw for the long setups, it's in reverse, higher time frame price displacement. And that's going to come by way of a reversal or expansion or a return to fair value. And in intermediate term imbalance in price, that's seeing price move to a premium or moving towards the buy side liquidity, make a run on the buy stops. And then short term sell liquidity below the marketplace. This is going to be ideal for pairing short exits to cover. And obviously those uh, sell stops, we're going to be buying those from the counterparties in the marketplace. And just like we did with the long setups, we would be looking for time of day influence, i.e. London open high of day or New York high formation. Now, in this specific teaching, we're only going to be dealing specifically with the institutional sponsorship seen in long setups. Everything you see in the example will we just be reversing that for the criteria used in the short setups. Okay, we're looking at a higher time frame chart. Okay, just for disclosure's sake, this is a Japanese yen, US dollar versus yen. And we're looking at a daily chart of that particular pair. And I gave you an ideal scenario where we can study a sample set of data. Okay, and it's not cherry picking. You guys can go through charts and you actually see some of these things that come to fruition many, many times. But the criteria is for our setups to be high probability, uh, we have to have institutional sponsorship. Now, what is institutional sponsorship specifically? It's the willingness 
to protect an underlying price swing that has high probability of unfolding. Now, I'm going to outline that throughout this entire teaching, but I want you to understand that simply institutional sponsorship is just the impact of large institutions, banks, and big equity traders coming in to fund the side of the marketplace that you anticipate seeing it run towards a particular side of the marketplace. For instance, if we're looking at a buy setup, we're going to be measuring and trying to identify characteristics that lead us to the assumption and ultimately in a, an understanding of institutional sponsorship as a concept so that way we can go forward in our trading and start looking for these fingerprints that are many times repeating over and over again when we use higher time frame setups. Now, looking at this daily chart, you see it shows price dropping down below an old low. And this is typically where sell stops are going to be residing or, as we call it, a liquidity pool. Uh, sell stops will pull below this old low, and everyone that would be wanting to go long, they would have a sell stop rate below that. And then the fact that because everyone's doing that same idea, putting a sell stop here, that's where the idea of a liquidity pool. All those orders are pulling together. Okay, and creating a pocket, if you will, of selling interest. Now, it doesn't mean that they want to go sell and short. Okay, some folks out there would see that as a particular um, interesting level to be short at a later time. Should we break below it? But in this case, when we see a price run like that, we obviously have to assume, again, it's that market efficiency paradigm again. Uh, participants are looking to protect long positions there. So it's not that they want to get short. They want to get out of the long position. So if we ever see a, a, part, a price move, the sell stops are ran out. Now, an aggressive trader, they can see this as an opportunity to go into a lower time frame. As that low is violated here, right on this candle here, you can go into a lower time frame and look for a similar pattern because price is fractal. That means everything you see on one time frame is replicable on the higher time frame and the lower time frame. So in other words, it's going to have a lot of similarity throughout all the time frames because price is still what? Price. So you can look into a uh, lower time frame and actually study the price action and come to uh, basically the same idea you're seeing here, an old low. So we would wait for short-term um, price action on a lower time frame to create that same scenario, which is a low being violated because everything on price is fractal. By having that understanding and expectation, we can take a long position. But we're going to go one step further and we're going to actually start looking for evidence of institutional sponsorship now looking at this setup okay what's the first thing that comes to mind for you as a trader you, obviously going back to the september's content there were some things i told you to look for in terms of studying price action what should you be focusing on well if we're anticipating a market move higher from down here after a run below the old lows we start looking for okay where could this market go to? Well, we have a short-term high here. We have a short-term high here. Look at this big candle here. Wonder what that's uh, going to suggest to us. And how about this old high back here? We have a nice price move here. Price could ultimately go back up here, or it could just come in this area here, close in that range, or it can come up and clear these relatively equal highs. Remember, the things we talked about in September, I gave you as bullet points for you. As soon as you go into a price chart, those are the same things you look for all the time. They're not changing, not morphing. It's the same premise every single time we look at price action. But looking at what we see here, prices forming a potential bullish order block. Now, this old high here, obviously we know what's going to be resting above that. It's going to be buy stops. Well, we have a down, last down candle here. Price is now reaching into that right here. And it's also dipped one more time into that area right below this old low. So we did one more time poke our head just below that uh, level. So we can anticipate now some sensitivity and protection of seeing the price not go lower. That's what we're anticipating. So if we see that, we're going to see what? characteristics of institutional sponsorship. That means the banks are coming in and they're capitalizing that old low back there. That means they're buying it again. Notice again that range up here. What is that? It's a liquidity void. 
So inside this liquidity void and above this old high, what do we have up here? This is called buy side liquidity. That means there's a willing participant or pool of buyers up there. Okay, so when we start talking about open float, we will be referring to a lot of these ideas as well. But uh, open float can be uh, a little confusing because it's relative to the time frame you're looking at. So while we're working on high time frames, I'm just going to focus primarily on classifying this as what it is. It's a buy side liquidity in the marketplace. So as a market maker, they see these opportunities to sell the run the stops that are below this old low below and all low to take the sell stops what is that implying they're probably accumulating those sell stops in the form of taking the buy side of it so if they're willing to buy those buy uh, buy those sell stops up that means they're primarily building a net long book and if we have suggestions in the marketplace in the form of price action suggesting that we have buy side liquidity in the form of a liquidity void and old equal highs back here we may see in fact a very easy, low risk, high probability trade scenario to be long. And obviously you see the results of price later on takes off and fills that void in. Now, by itself, you may not have caught that trade. You may not have seen this trade. You may not have uh, seen it as we're describing here because obviously we have the benefit of hindsight. But let's assume for a moment we're going to go through the characteristics of what we just outlined in the beginning of this teaching. What we have to look for is higher time frame dis uh, displacement in price. That's what you're seeing right here. This is higher time frame price displacement. That means there is clear evidence that there is a large entity entering the marketplace. And the reason why we know that is because if this is a daily chart, daily charts are not going to move that dynamic without sponsorship behind it by banks or large institutions or big equity traders. Again, the reason why we focus on the daily chart is because that's where the banks are trading off of. Those levels are key to those institutional level traders. So when we see this, obviously we have to go back to where did that move begin? We have, everything has to have a origin. So we go back to the beginning of that price swing. That higher time frame price displacement has to have a root price level at which we can classify as an institutional sponsorship level in other words where uh, everything started from so if we can arrive at that we can break down the marketplace and wait for another opportunity should it get down to that level again that comes in the way of this order block right here that last down candle we're using the body of that candle here not so much the wick because the book is basically the body of this candle as well Price comes down and hits that level. Now, again, to identify institutional sponsorship in a particular segment of price action, you need to see immediate dynamic response. If it's lethargic, if it's not willing to move right away, that means there is no institutional orders in that area. So therefore, if you're in a trade and you see that lackluster activity, the first thing you should be thinking is either reduce risk, cut the position in half, or just completely bail on the trade. You can always re-enter it another time. You can always go back in on another uh, continuation pattern, but do not force yourself to come to marry a idea that it has to be just because you entered the trade and the trade idea doesn't show you evidence that it wants to move in your favor dynamically. Don't ever regret or feel bad about wanting to collapse that trade because even if it moves in your favor after you collapse it, if you have the uh, the characteristics that we're describing here in this teaching in your trade and you start seeing it, chances are you're probably not in a good move. Okay, If you're on the right side of the marketplace, the market's going to move dynamically immediately as soon as you get in. If you are offside, <laughs> you're going to see either – the market hauling him hauling and back and forth uh you know stalling and then ultimately uh re, re, you know reversing on you um that's the worst scenario i'd rather have my losers be immediate you know show me that there's an evidence that uh, i'm on the wrong side of the marketplace and i'm offside but sometimes it won't happen sometimes it'll be really lethargic and they'll start to squeeze on you slowly and then just about when you realize you're uh you're on the wrong side then they'll accelerate towards your stop or you know if you don't have a stop you really it hurts worse but uh, that's why we use stop loss orders. But when we see this sell stop uh, low, 
capitalized by this buying in here, okay, we see this higher time frame price displacement. That means the elephant has put itself inside that pool. Uh, I did a teaching uh, on my tutorial page where I kind of gave you an analogy where if you had a small children's swimming pool in your backyard and you filled it up with water and uh, an elephant stepped inside that small children's pool, what would happen? Obviously, one of two things. The, if it's an inflatable pool, it probably would, would collapse. But if it could withstand the fact that the ele elephant was in that small children's pool, it, the fact that the elephant getting in that pool would displace the water. It would rise up above the brim of that pool and overflow. And that's what we're seeing here. This is the evidence of a large body or entity that has a lot more money than us, and they got into the marketplace here. How do we know that? Because the price surged. And again, this is the daily chart. So if price can get back down to that level again, price should see a, a responsiveness on the upside. So we're going to start looking for signs and evidences of institutional sponsorship there because we already identify an area where price should see return to buying again because it had a strong willingness to want to be bought up at this level here. So we're back down at that level again. So we should see upside momentum or if not – for anything else, a short-term bounce that we can actually trade and take some profits off of. So focusing on this bullish order block here, that's where the institutional sponsorship is going to be begin. And it comes in a way of a bullish order block. So we have this idea when we take this information, we can transpose all these levels down to a lower time frame. But I'm going to build on this idea with this time frame here. So we got one and number two of the criteria when we're looking for institutional sponsorship. We see higher time frame displacement, and we see price trading back down into a discount and closing in, basically returning to a fair value or back to an old area where it was bought up the last time. The next level is where where's the short-term buy liquidity? That means the buyers that would be above where current price uh, market is right here this where we're assuming the price would be at the time where would be the logical area where we'd expect to see the banks want to unload those long positions if they're going to buy here where would be a where would there be a ideal scenario for them to want to sell those long positions well we have a short-term high here we have a short-term high here but we also have this old swing high back here which was the midpoint of this overall price swing here okay so we had a consolidation accumulation Price explodes, okay, and it reverses up here, and it comes back down, back down to the area which it was bought up again. If we see a willingness to go up, we have to take our position off at logical areas. So we want to see the, will the willingness to see the market rate run back up into these highs here, run those buy stops, run those buy stops above the short-term high, and then ultimately we want to see this high as well. Retraded to now if the market can come back above this old high here That's showing a willingness to do what? Hold for higher prices. So if they are going to hold it to this level here, where would be the next level? On this chart that you uh, consider for unloading long positions by the banks Well above this old high there's buy stop liquidity obviously as we noted earlier so above the marketplace we have Buyers that would be willing to buy up here because why they have a short position here and again. It's that market efficiency paradigm You have to think in terms of the market as the market maker. So there's going to be buyers up here So if you're going to be a bookmaker, okay at the bank and you're buying and you're net long on your book down here You want to unload where 10 pips 15 pips up? No, obviously not that you can't move your positions in and out You're, you're controlling such a large book and a large equity base you want to get it out of up here. Why? Because there's going to be a pool of buy stops up here that in the form of protecting short positions, there's a large degree of buying interest because of that very very nature of what we're seeing in price. The market has traded lower. They've trailed their stop loss to just above this high here, just above this high here, and stubborn or very strong-willed bears will have their buy stop protection right above this old high here, or their protective uh, buy stop for their short position would be resting just above that high, basically. So if you're going to be buying down here like a bank, you're going to be looking for the move to go up to here. And price obviously goes up there and hits it. Now, here's the thing. As price hits that level right up here, what's it doing? 
it's pairing orders with the buy stops. So that buy stop liquidity is gone. So what's the next level of institutional order flow suggest price may go to? That old high back here. And what's resting above that old high? Buy stop liquidity. So now think for a moment. We have a daily chart here where sell stops were ran out. Price was willing to go higher. Came back down in that same area here. They bought it up. Ran an area of buy stop liquidity. And we have an old high back here still. If it's going to go up here, that means it's going to be highly unlikely for it to come all the way back down to this level. Again, why would that be uh, unlikely because we've seen this low here and it rallied higher. We've seen this lower low here that went below this old low and it rallied up. We came back down to that same level here and they bought it again. Now this time we were able to move above this old high. So market structure on the daily chart has now changed to bullishness. So if we see this, the whole premise behind this teaching is institutional sponsorship should protect price from ever coming back down into this area here so don't think just because we rallied up here let's go back down here and let's wait for price to go and give us a buy signal here and then get us a ride up to that level up here no that's not how it's going to happen we've already cleared an area right here this old high and now think if we were trying to buy here okay and our ultimate objective would be to take our profits up here if we grade that swing, this would be origin. This would be the midway point or equilibrium. And then terminus would be up here. So there, inside this little section of price action would be the first grade of that price swing. This is equilibrium or midway point. Then there's going to be something up here, probably, before we get to that level. And then ultimately up here, terminus. So we have four stages of that price swing to identify. And institutional sponsorship should support price at those logical areas in price. Down here, usually it's pretty quick. They don't want to get you an opportunity to get in there. Okay, and once it takes off, then you got to look at the equilibrium price point of the overall price leg you're trying to capture. In other words, we're trying to buy down here and get off our position up here. So we're trying to buy down here and sell to the buy stop traders up here. In other words, anyone that's bearish to have a buy stop above here, or do you think this market's going to be a breakout uh, candidate if it gets above that high? Uh, those buy stops are our target. But in here, we do not expect to see price come all the way back down to this level because we've already seen it trade from this level here, this level here, this level here. And now we have market structure breaking on a very intermediate term basis with this old high being violated here. So now looking at this, we could see what? We have a down candle in here. Price has already moved to the midpoint of that candle right there. Even though it's a down candle, this is an opportunity to anticipate price doing what? Being protected here. So institutional sponsorship, okay, should be identified in this area here. They should not see price come lower. And if we see that, then it's going to be a high probability the market's going to want to reach up for this level up in here which is aiming for these old buy stops. So we're going to take a look at that whole thing in the form of a four-hour chart. As price came down and hit that level here and gave us that same fractal idea, trading below an old low, okay, because that's what we saw on the daily chart, price goes just below that old low here and rallies off. Now, think for a second. What's actually occurring here? What's actually happening? What's this right here? What's these two down candles forming? Well, it's dropping price, but it's dropping at a specific level or going into a higher time frame support level. What is that? What's that create when it does that? It's a bullish order block. It's down price or down candles at an anticipated level of support or we we expect to see institutional order flow send price higher. So in other words, we're expecting, we're anticipating that that bullishness in price. Obviously, we have buy stop liquidity above this short term high, that short term high, and ultimately we have those buy stop liquidity resting above the uh, high that we were just mapping out earlier.
each time the market goes up and takes out a level of buy stop liquidity, we don't collapse the trade entirely. We don't look for reversal patterns. We do not look for divergence in indicators every time we get to an old high here. We're looking for a willingness to keep moving higher to run these longer term buy stops. As price takes that first level out, those buy stops are gone. What's missing now? The liquidity in the form of buy stops above that short term high. So what we'd be expecting to see is price continuously look to go higher to go after the what? The next level of buy stops. And that comes in the way of those old highs here. But not losing sight of the buy stops above that higher high. Price surges higher, runs through, takes out the, the second level buy, buy stop liquidity. Now notice what's happened here. While it was a dynamic surge through that second level buy stop liquidity, it fails to go back to that old high. This is classic price action. Now think about what we've talked about earlier. We had the original uh, point of which the, the price swing began or the origin. Then we have the first area or the first uh, scale of that price swing in here. And then price goes up and now we're getting just about to the point which the equilibrium price point would come in the, way, uh, in the formation for analysis. Well, we would look for the fact that price has an unwillingness to go lower. That would be evidence of what? Institutional sponsorship. In other words, we're, we're not seeing them allow price go lower. That's basically all I'm saying in clear terms. So again, those buy stops are gone. And we're focusing primarily on the move justified by price action. Is it going to still go for those buy stops above that old high here? And ultimately, it runs up and snaps through that old high. You can see price ending that at the terminus. But notice what we have here. Price has moved in grades, and it has moved up into what would be deemed as equilibrium on the daily chart. So let's take a closer look of why this was such an easy expectation and how institutional sponsorship uh, could aid you in your price action study when you see buy stock liquidity as your targets. You know, what, what things should we see in price action to help support these ideas? And we're going to take a look at this in the form of a lower time frame chart. And again, outlining why the buy stock liquidity was ran out. Okay, we're looking at a four hour chart of that price swing. You can see the price swing here, high, that's this move here, this whole price swing. And we're going to look at institutional sponsorship throughout the entire price swing. And you probably already noticed there's some blue line segments on there. So we're going to start talking about some super secret sauce. <laughs> we're looking at now a 60 minute chart. And I want you to take a look at the reactions that happen from the blue line segments. Okay, and I want you to look at it real close. Those blue lines are one of the coolest things I discovered about price action. And not only is it indicative of what future price uh, direction may be, but it also gives us prognostication for future setups. It doesn't just give us a right now what should be support or resistance. It gives us a, a future prognostication for where setups may un unfold at a later time. So let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to add, again, the levels on those short-term highs, and we're going to note them as the old highs. So every time you see that little gray horizontal line segment, what we're actually drawing your attention to is these old highs here, and that's going to be in the form of those old buy stops. Okay, so again, you can see those gray lines here, and all that's doing is just delineating those old highs in the form of price. Now, I don't want you focusing on price numbers or anything like that. I just want you focusing primarily on price action alone. The delivery of price is all we're interested in talking about specifically for this teaching. Now, we have the beginning of the move here. Price trades down, 
back into. Now, this is the, the run below that previous low. So we see price making that low, and then we see a reaction. Then we see price trading lower. Okay, all these down candles is building what? That four-hour order block. Okay, it's a bullish order block beginning right there. So that high on that candle begins the order block that would be deemed a bullish order block on the four-hour chart. But because this is a smaller time frame, we're going to have a lot more candles, obviously. So I want you to take a look at the blue line segments. Okay, what I'm delineating there is the opening price at midnight in New York. Okay. If we suspect that price is going to be bullish, we can look at the opening price at midnight in New York. And if we're expecting a price move higher, what we see in the form of institutional sponsorship is price when it goes below the opening price at midnight should be accumulated. So here's the opening price later in the day. This is New York. Price trades higher. Okay, here's the opening price at midnight the next day. We're not concerned about the movement above it. We want to see what happens when price goes below it. Okay, now obviously going below the opening price here, we have what? What's all this? This is a liquidity void. Okay, price is going to do what? Return back down into an order block. Price does what the very next day? It opens, trades lower, and does what? Rallies. The next day we open, we trade lower, and then we rally. The next day we open, small little move below the opening price, and institutional sponsorship steps in again and sends price higher. The next day, we open at New, uh, New York's midnight candle, trades lower again, and what happens? Institutional sponsorship steps in one more time, and they buy it again. Rallies up. We start moving into consolidation, and we'll look at each individual uh, stage in price action as we look at it here. The first one is we have that bullish order block and price comes back down and snaps right back into it right here. Five pips added to the level. You could be a buyer at that point. Again, this is in the London time frame. The next one here is a down candle right at the opening price. In other words, when we find the opening price and then we're going to be looking for a down candle that down candle should be seeing capitalization of new longs. We see that come to fruition when the down candle is violated. Okay, so let me go back to this for a moment. We have this down candle here. This becomes an order block that's bullish when this candle trades through it. So at a later time, when it hits it here, you could be a buyer. And it has to be below the opening price of that day. Now it can happen during London or it can happen in New York. Either one is still a good viable trade. The next day here, we see what price trade below the opening price. We have a small little order block here and this one here as well, but we're going to uh, we're going to say we're not going to worry about that one because we're trading at equilibrium. OK, we're going to wait for an order block to form, which we see right here. So between this high here and this low here, we're essentially trading at equilibrium. So when we're at equilibrium price points like that, we want to see price give us an order block to give us the justification for wanting to expand higher and away from that equilibrium. We see the down candle here. Draw that out in time. Price hits it here. Add five pips to that level. We could be a buyer. Price takes off. We have the opening price here. Trades just below it here. The down candle at that level. Now notice I'm using a down candle prior to that new day. That's okay. You gotta use the previous day session sometime. The down candle here is where it's being capitalized. They're buying up more of it. So the institutional sponsorship should be justified by seeing what? The down candle being violated on the upside, which you see it here. So when price comes back down, it doesn't come right down to on price. I don't want to give you every possible, you know, perfect scenario. And then we see another opening price trades down. But we get a down candle here, and it's violated on the upside, so this becomes a bullish order block. So you could be a buyer here. So now think in terms of power three. Power three is the concept I teach as it relates to the daily open, high, low, and close bar.
So in other words, a time frame of daily charting. If your minimum trading is trying to capture the bulk of that daily range, uh, you want to be buying near the opening on an up day and exiting on the close. And obviously, it sounds like you know everyone should know that. But the problem is, is 99% of everyone doesn't know how to do that. Okay, it's easy to hear conceptually and say, "Oh yeah, of course, that's obvious," but try doing it. <laughs> so what I have taught is power three is when you're bullish, you want to be buying near or below the opening price. This scenario does that every time it gets you either at below or very close to the opening price and allows the, the the range to expand for you and you get a higher close the reason why we're expecting each day to have a higher close each day moving from a low up to a higher high close from a low to a higher close a low up to a higher close a low up to a higher close a low up to a higher close and again a low up to a higher close ultimately a low to a higher close and then we start a new day here we can't see it on this chart yet but look what's happening price is being drawn up to that first old high and look what it does once it gets up at that old high it starts staying sideways it's consolidating okay traditional support resistance players will see that old high as resistance and they'll want to sell short so what's going to happen they're going to sell short sell short sell short and they'll see what price go nowhere and their buy stops will be just above this old high and then you run through them again they come back down capitalize new longs and then extends it up where to, to the old high here the second one and what's happening there same scenario they give you a reason to expect this thing to go lower because it's resistance old resistance okay should be sold that's what classic textbooks say so what's going to happen is they're going to take a short position put their stop loss another buy stop Right above this old high, they take those positions out right here. So they're not going to see what? Any lower prices. But we send price back down again into this old order block. We'll have to take the next slide. So price in here, that's where, we're, that's where we just left off at. Price comes back down into that order block here, right there. Rallies up, and now this is where we stop. We stop short of the ultimate terminus or the objective of the price swing. It has a retracement and goes lower. And now this retracement lower will get everybody excited thinking it's been a, a, a high formed. Okay, so dollar yen should be trading lower. Get short dollar yen. Everyone's going to have that on the forums. Everyone's going to be talking about it on Twitter, for you know, social media, everything. And it's only just going to go back down to this order block over here. Okay, the same capitalized order block that we saw on this initial run here. Why is this one being used again? Because we had this old area of institutional order flow in the form of the old high. At this point, that's when classic support resistance works. Because why? We have an unfulfilled objective up here with that old higher high. So price comes in, accumulates that same position in here. Consolidation. Back to the consolidation, it expands up off of an order block. But I want you to think about all these down candles in here. All these down candles on a 15 minute time frame creates a larger order block on a higher time frame. Draw that out in time, that's the reason why we're seeing price trade here. So, yes, the market opens here, trades lower, closes in the range here, this liquidity void. Back into the order block here, and then we have the opening here. It doesn't go lower. Can't do anything with this yet, so it has to expand. So we can't do anything with a buy on this day here. We wait to the next day. The opening, price trades back down, closes in its void, back to an order block here, and in the beginning of all these down candles, that's the buy here. The next one. Here's the opening price here. It trades just below it here, but it's dipping into this down candle, which is an order block from the previous day in New York. Okay, so you, I want you to think about where these order blocks are forming. You're referencing old bullish order blocks from the previous day or maybe three sessions ago. And you can buy old bullish order blocks because they're going to do what? Recapitalize them. That's institutional sponsorship. They're defending specific levels. 
Why should they be defending these particular levels? Because their vested interest is to see it go above that old higher high where they're ultimately looking to try to take out all of their long positions. Yes, they're going to scale out some here. They're going to scale out some here. They may scale out some above here and here, but ultimately they're trying to drive it up here because that's where a large degree of buyers are going to be. And price ultimately trades down off that candle here and rallies up and ends at terminus. So I want you to think about when you're looking at price action, everyone asks for what's the order block to use? Well, it starts with understanding where the market should go. Okay, and that starts by looking at what we talked about in September, which you should be focusing on right now. Down candles right before the up moves, up candles right before the down moves, looking for liquidity voids, looking for old lows to be violated and then rallied off of. That's a turtle suit. Or an old high to be rallied through and then rejected and trade softer. That's a turtle soup sell. All these ideas, okay, begin to start taking shape in your in your price action study. But you have to use specific generic things like time. Every order block that we refer to here is linked to a London session or a New York session. And they're happening from the previous day or a couple days ago. But the idea is they should be capitalized again because there is an underlying interest for the market maker to see price go higher. So they're not going to allow much in way of retracement. But if it retraces, it's going to go back to logical areas in its form of bullish order blocks or running an old low. Now the lows can be, again, same way an old previous New York session or London low, they'll take out the sell stops below the lows and then rally it up. The same thing can be seen with the bullish order blocks. You want to be focusing on the London session and the New York session and using these down candles in those previous sessions to give you new buying opportunities. If you're seeing that come to fruition in your charts, you are seeing and identifying institutional sponsorship. Every one of your successful trades will have this hallmark. The characteristic of seeing these uh, recapitalized order blocks and seeing the moves you know, gravitate towards these higher time frame liquidity pools in the form of a buy stops for the, when you're long. When you have that, it makes trading very easy. It it's allows you to relax and not get so freaked out when you see these retracements like here. Okay, All this is, is right before the last push up to go to where ultimately the price may go. Now, I don't want to sell the idea that it's always going to go to your levels, okay, because you're going to have to do a lot of learning, you know, studying these ideas. But I want you to focus primarily on the characteristics I've shown you here. Specific order blocks that take place at London and New York, okay, they will help you discern whether there is institutional sponsorship in your particular trade. If you see the lack of that, chances are you're probably offside and you either want to want to reduce ris the risk on the trade or maybe go to the sidelines and wait for another opportunity. So until the next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.